Hello and welcome to another episode of Test Chamber. I'm Dan Tack. And joining me today is Matt Miller. Hey, hey. As we take a look at the new roguelike dungeon crawler, Darkest Dungeon. This game looks rad, Dan. Uh, this game is rad. I, uh, I am immediately charmed by the art style and I, having had a little bit of a sneak peek of the gameplay in action, I am pretty stoked about the kind of stuff that this game is all about. It seems like, well, like an old school D&D adventure. So it goes into early access next week. Uh -huh. um, I've put about 15 hours in this game so far. Wow. It is uh, it is incredible. If you're a fan of dungeon crawling RPGs or roguelikes, this is the game for you. And I will, uh, I will throw in with you and say the art style is incredible. It really lends a lot to the dungeon exploration of this game. Just very, very thematic. Yeah, totally. So you, you say it's a roguelike, right? So... Um, it is. So we're talking turn-based, procedurally generated dungeons, and of course, the big cornerstone of uh, roguelikes, permadeath. Oh, sure. Um, but there is a little bit of a sense, I think you told me that uh, even though it, it's b basically a roguelike, there, is, there are qualities that grow even when you fail, lands. right? Even sure. when you totally wipe. So you're when we kind get to of our developing your overall ability. So the overall arching development this comes from the city growth. Sure. That all may hear of your arrival. So we're going through the tutorial real quick. As you see, each character has four key abilities uh -huh. and then movement during okay. combat. Um, and these can be changed out, so there's actually seven you can pick from for each class. Oh, cool. So this is a really good move. It bleeds the target and does good damage. Um, pretty self-explanatory what bleeds are. Since I've already got him bleeding, I'm going to try to use my warrior character. This is a tutorial, so we're, we're stuck with the warrior in the room. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to try to stun him so he just hits there. You definitely want to minimize the damage opportunities that you take in this game, because as you'll see, we have another bar under our health bar. I was just going to ask you about that. That's your the, your stress. Is that the other big stat that you've got? Yes. So what's the deal with that? I mean, why would we care about these guys' stress? So if your stress bar fills up, your character will freak out in a various in, in some fashion. Okay. So uh, what, what, is that, what does that look like? What happens when they stress these out? These giant they... marks will appear over their head, and they'll get a massive debuff. Uh, either paranoia, masochism, fear, any of these things, and they're all incredibly bad to happen okay. to you. Uh, even abusive is one of my favorites. If the character becomes abusive, they'll just start watching your other characters miss and then like start insulting them, and then they become more stressed. Right. So it's like an infection almost. Yeah, it's awful. You don't want that to happen. Sure. So uh, you've only got two characters right now, but what is it, four is the max? The standard you're going to have in your party outside of the tutorial is four, mm -hmm. but you can have a roster of much bigger than that. Okay. And as you'll see when we get to the town here, if we complete the tutorial challenge, yes. This is the tutorial, but this, we're worried about surviving. It can This guy, this, this big guy in front is really nasty because he protects the one in back. He's a big character. Yeah. So you can't even like hit behind him unless you're using an AOE move. Okay. And we just had a big miss, so this could get bad. That blanket fire move that that rogue oh, has is extremely that dangerous. Oh, painful. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, we got a dodge in there. That's good. So we're left with sort of the... All we can do is chip through the big guy or try to kill him, the one in the back, with our rogue. With our rogue. Well, that was a good hit, right? Nine yeah, damage. He's really got a lot of health, though. He does. He does. As you can see, there are tons and tons of stats when I hover over these things. They've yeah. all got different resistances to key maneuvers. We've got the same kind of stats going on down there. Our highwayman is in rough shape. Yes, we are in danger. Okay. I'm going to try to kill the guy in the back first. It would help a lot. Oh, boy. Oh, no. See, the, <laughs> the, the positioning is incredibly important in this game. Okay. Especially well, so when why? you have why four. Why is that? What, it's not going to make a huge difference with two, but okay. So, like, like I hover this move, it shows the two spots that it can be used in, okay, and the two spots it can hit on the enemy formation. Sure. And this will also like indicate for like area of effect attacks. You'll see this hits two. It doesn't in this case though, because like I said, this is a big character, so he pr he protects the guys in back of him like a true tank. Right. Um, so we're in trouble here. That that movement is not good. We definitely don't want our other guy in front, but we did get a good blow there. As you can see, it's turn-based. The torch up top is very important as well. Okay. What does that but indicate? We'll get into that a little bit later uh, when it matters. Okay. Um, now, as you can see, he can't use his gun moves because he's not in the right position. Right. So all we can do is try to kill this target or waste my turn and move back into his old position, which I think we actually will do. 
Uh, oh god. All right, that was that is good. There's only so one. Yeah. I'm, oh, okay. this one. This one could be bad. Okay. Can we just take their treasure and run? We cannot. It is not an option. Oh man. All right. How many? Uh, so I see you've got a crusader. You've got the highwaymen. Yes. These are all individual classes. Correct. Um, are there a bunch of classes? Or are we talking about like three or four total classes? There are ten in the early access build that will be available next week. With yeah. a total of sixteen to seventeen in the final. He got less stress for that kill. He was happy that he got the kill, so he's more confident <laughs> about the outcome. Well, sure. Victory. Even and though he's about to die. We made it though. Both, hey. both characters alive. Now, what's this? Where, is this Lots the treasure that was in the treasure box? No. This okay. is quest-dependent treasure. Okay. We're going to open the box here, though. Oh, good. Hopefully it's not trapped. And it's trapped chest. Oh. What wow. do you think? Do it. <laughs> it's trapped. Oh, you got poison. Fool me once. See, it's okay here because we're leaving. Yeah. That seemed like an unsafe place for two dudes to be by themselves and without any help from anybody else. So this is the mission success window. As you'll see, okay, so we got some character development happening after each quest. Okay. I'm lucky he got a good ability. So oh, so, like, you can get different abilities even though, like, this is the Crusader. That's the class, yeah. right? But you don't always get the same upgrade ability. Correct. He could get all kinds of stuff. This is not a... This is a trait. So these got are just... It. And he also got a good ability. They can get bad ones, too, mm -hmm. and they often do. So you've got to really juggle all these good and bad aspects to Welcome each character. Home. So, so are we is, are we just dungeon delving for the sake of it's fun to go into a dungeon and get scared? Or no. is there some no, kind of concept no. behind what's going on in this game? Are we are trying to restore to the glory to our great manor that once existed on this <laughs> plane. And it the the crawling chaos from below destroyed our family oh. and our man and our manor. We're going to, to the cleanse the state. To cleanse the evil that we've laid upon the world. Yes. I see. Women and men so this is where we recruit new people okay and it gives us a couple of templated characters to start but normally every week or every dungeon run you come here and there's new characters cool and you can upgrade how many characters come every week and how many characters you can have in your barracks and that's what you were talking about before things that carry over right absolutely so those things we got at the end of the quest run these all these little things down here yeah even at your worst, you're going to be continually upgrading this town and making some sort of progress. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, that, that's one of the things that is often frustrating me, has Great often frustrated me in roguelikes, is that here. sense that I can put a lot of time in, but rain. not, you know, I finish out a run. And even if I did We're really well, running. it's like, oh, well, what was that worth, right? That was just like this one sense. moment of me going through the roguelike run, and then... Uh, it didn't matter, right? I'm just starting over from scratch. Whereas I, I like the idea of having something that I'm building towards over time. Right. So this is the sort of your dungeon map. Right now, It's we're just starting, so we only have one option, and that's to scout off the newbie dungeon. Okay. And we're okay with that. So we've got the four heroes that, I, you know, the recommended team, but this is going to change a lot over the course of the game. Like, I particularly don't care for the Plague Doctor the rest of these characters are okay, but there's lots of other options I like, too. And, mix and it was and totally classes. random what you got, right? I think you start with this core. Oh, you do. But after that, it's, totally it's completely random. random after that. So we're going to stock up on food. Mm -hmm. You need to eat in dungeons or you die. Yeah. Um, and torches. So tell me about running out of torches. Uh, you don't want it to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, so your torch light will continually decline as you as you journey through the dungeon. And your torchlight determines the difficulty of your encounters and also the quality of loot you find. Mm. So the darker it is, the better for your loot. But you don't... Well, really? Yes. So you're sort of like pushing your luck a little bit? Is right. that the idea? If you feel confident, you should let the light decline for better rewards. But you will never... <laughs> this is not something that's normal, okay? Okay. So now we've got a full party composition. Yeah. And they, so do they. As you can tell, we got a tanky guy in front. A little heavy hitter, but weak life in the middle, and of course, a really dangerous shooter in the back. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons the Highwayman is nice, he's got this kind of AoE blast move. It's a very, very nice move. That will get you through a lot of tough encounters. Very pretty, cool. pretty standard stuff happening here. These are skeletons, so a bleed attack is not going to do anything to them. They're made of bones, right? Mm -hmm. However, Blight will work, and we have a couple of really nice Blight attacks on the Plague Doctor. And, of course, he misses. Yeah. Crusader is excellent against undead, as the smite uh, smite is, does extra damage mm -hmm. for him. As the fiend falls. So we, we want to avoid the tank to last. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, these Vestals, sort of like the clerics. They're great. Okay. They, they can fulfill their roles in lots of different party positions. 
They can heal the party, and they have really great attacks. Like this one. Good all-arounders. Yeah, really, really great. Like, if you have a spot in your party you don't know what to put there, just throw a Vestal there. Got it. Now, he knocked him back a square. These aren't the hardest enemies in the game, as, as you'd expect. Sure. But. Well, how how is you say you've played a good bit of this? How yeah. has the um, enemy variety been generally? Pretty good. Um, Give them no quarter. There's a lot of core types you run into in each dungeon. Like mm -hmm. in this first uh, dungeon area you go to, there's lots of undead creatures, and then in other areas you have like slimy pigmen, uh, nasty insects. Um, just uh, there's a pretty good variety, and so the boss. It's not all like humanoid enemies. No, no, and the bosses are very, very dangerous. <laughs> sure. So do you have the choice? You kind of like coming up on a boss room, and you could be like, ah, well, we're not up for this. We're going to turn back. You can. You can abandon a dungeon at any time, but it will cost you greatly. Oh, really? How so? Your characters won't get the experience for any so of the stuff. You can't that they did. level without doing a quest, right? Yeah. Like it's not a thing. And you'll lose a bunch of the loot you found. So apparently, this guy has a trait that says he must open anything he sees, and, <laughs> and he now he's he bleeding for it. Yes. Random torch, as you can see down on the dungeon map here. Very similar to a classic dungeon crawler, except not nearly as complicated. You don't need to bust out the graphing paper. Yeah, sure. You select your route as you go through. Um, the mission here is to explore 90% of the room, so I can skip one. So sure. we'll probably skip this one and go along that And path. keep going. Yeah. This is actually a very dangerous fight. Especially we since, got a big dude since up I front. was really stupid and I didn't switch my team around back before. Uh... Oh, he took hey, care of it Hey, there you go. Actually, there's there's lots of positional moves too. Like I like to have my rogue uh, have a a move called like point blank shot. So if he gets put to the front, he can shoot himself back. Right. So what's the leveling system like for these characters? Are they is it sort of numerical things where your uh, Raynal, your Crusader is level one right now and will go up to level two and then to level three, or is it it's, more uh, nuanced than that? His res it's more nuanced. His resolve level will go up if he levels up, which means he'll take less stress damage. In, uh, in encounters, which is key. To, okay. But uh, you'll also be advancing their equipment mm -hmm. and their skills independently of their own resolve level. And that can be both from loot you find in the dungeons as well as stuff you buy in town? Uh, the stuff you buy in town will upgrade these areas, and then you can find artifacts in the dungeons that offer pluses and minuses uh, all over the, across the board. And some of them can be, even be quite rare, like sort of a Diablo-style loot system almost. Sure. Uh, well, and we were talking about the the art in this game. I mean, it's very charming. It uh, manages to both be sort of oh, like cartoony, they're gonna get really but also scared really about that, dark yeah. and interesting, right? Yeah. Um, which which I really like. Um, but I, I know that you have said that there's aspects of this game that make it put it into the running for being one of the really great roguelikes. Well, we are in early access and I don't like to talk about games, you know. Yeah, fair enough. I that, mean, like, it, there's aspect. a lot of things that could shake uh, shake that up and make this not be the great game that it has the potential to be, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, but, I'm very comfortable saying this is this is one of the best roguelikes I've ever played. And, and so why? I mean, what is it that makes it so different from, I mean, you get you play a lot of roguelikes. I do. So what is it here that is is really wowing you so far, it's, even it's, in this early access? It's really the combination of everything. Just having meaningful permadeath at the same time is not, you know, shoving you in the gutter completely. Yeah. Like you are gonna have people die, as you can see. <laughs> poor, poor Reginald is he's on death's door, so he could well, die. Well, this is the dude who kept wanting to open all the locks, right? Yes. So you know. That's However, his you problem. can get far worse afflictions than that on your characters, and then they will get a. Over the course, they'll get a host of afflictions and bonuses. So it's, it's like. Do you really care about you know plus range damage on a crusader that he that he got? No, you don't really want that. Right. Um, so it's really about getting this perfect group together, right? That all have abilities that synergize with each other. Like right now, we're just like bleeding and poisoning and stuff like that. But once we get other characters available for composition, like say characters that do extra damage when the opponent is stunned and all this other stuff, it gets really deep. Yeah, sure. Well, and it, you were talking about building the perfect party, but it, it seems like these guys are going to go back to town, and even if they're part of this perfect party of yours, they're going to need to rest up, right? The the only way to remove stress, yes, will be in town. So you'll have to send them to the church to pray or the gambling hall or to the to the booze hall, mm -hmm. and they will you know, get rid of the stress they get in these dungeon encounters. So you will never be using the same team at all times. Yeah, so you can't just have the one perfect team, right? Oh, you, you have to have a broader roster that can uh, account for the fact that sometimes your guys are gonna be 
needing to hang out and just get their energy back. It, it goes way beyond that, too. Like, once a character gets to a certain resolve level, they will be unable to do easy missions. Okay. They will say, you know, this mission is beneath me. You'll have to... <laughs> and then, then you'll have to put him right into the fray again. So it's ne you're never going to get comfortable. Yeah. That's cool. So have they talked very much about what... Uh, how far out they are for from final release? You said early access is coming here real soon. Yeah, I believe it was stated somewhere that uh, I think in a Reddit AMA or something that um, it was going to be mid mid this year. Yeah, something like that. Uh, uh, but based on what I'm seeing here, I mean, e even this early access build, this is not always true. As you and <laughs> it I definitely have isn't spoken just... about a lot before that early access is worth spending time on. But this looks really solid, even in its in its early access phase. Sure, so not all the stuff is here. Like, only three of the five dungeons are out in this build, so you can't even go to the darkest dungeon. Sure, but the name you, of the game. <laughs> yes. Uh, and not all the classes are in. And there, I'm sure there's lots of other stuff. Not all the buildings in town. But uh, even at this stage, it's incredibly fun. And if you, yeah, absolutely. If you like roguelikes or dungeon crawlers, this is not to be missed. That's awesome. Well... I think you got you sold me. Um, I, I've been eager to dive into this since I first heard about it uh, several months ago, uh, but I hadn't had a chance to play it yet. So I'm happy to, that the early access stuff is finally coming through, and it's even if it's not complete, that um, it looks like it offers a pretty substantial chunk of what the final game is going to be. Yeah, it's just it's a it's an entire package, I guess I'd say, like just the combination of the, the distinct art styles, the the, everything has its like you know on the base roll. Okay, it's a noxious blast. Mm -hmm. It does this with this accuracy rate, but there's all kinds of. Once you really get into it, it's like, oh, what if I combine this and this and this skill and that skill, and um, you start coming up with some really cool combos. And then the game will do everything it can to mess up your position <laughs> and your combos and make you rethink everything. And it does this consistently. Right. Well, and I, I think for me, one of the things I am most fascinated about. The game is the idea that not only are you, you juggling your physical health, but your mental health, right? Like the As, idea yeah. that you're having to... See, he's been... Reynold has been taxed <laughs> on both levels here. He's either going to die or go crazy very shortly. Right, right. Well, struck. well, hey, you got rid of those guys first. And that, and that as you see, it gave a little a stress victory. reducer to the team. Sure. By, nice by horribly was. murdering those cultists. Yes. Yeah. Now, see, I can use food to heal, but there's a... I have to make sure I keep at least four, because my group is going to get hungry, Yeah, and they have to eat at that point, or you take serious damage I'm, and stress. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, Dan, there's a lot of rooms you haven't explored in this dungeon yeah, cool. yet. We've barely, we've barely begun, <laughs> and we've already run into two fights. This is unusual for the, you know... Oh! oh and, and there's a trap. Yeah, that... So he's stressed and hurt. <laughs> This could this could be going better. And this is a small dungeon. Later on, you have to camp within the dungeon, and that's another element of play that we won't get to show. Yeah. Um, but you can use the, every character has different special campfire abilities as well to reduce stress, heal, or give buffs. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to prepare for a boss battle. And we're gonna have to go down here and then crawl all the way back up. That's gonna be fine. Well, hopefully it'll be less eventful. Oh, that guy. Oh. Was... How's he still alive? He, he's on death's door, but his resolve is now being tested. Oh, yeah. we lucked out. Yeah, that's a good one. From becoming He's born of rage. So, in a rare occurrence, instead of like you know falling prey to the pressure, they can actually be tested and come out for the good. Yeah. However, I, I he still doesn't I can't have any feed help, him and he's gonna die. Um, yeah. So can you just put him like all the way in the back? We could, but guess what he can do there? Absolutely nothing. Ah. Uh, he doesn't have any moves that can function back there. Um. And if you don't do a move in, uh, in combat, if you don't use an ability, you yeah. get more stress. That won't matter for him, though, because he's already he's, he's, at, he's at his limit. Sure. So he's good. And this is probably going to be the end of the voyage. <laughs> I mean, that does not look good. So these little skeleton guys, these guys are more focused on doing stress damage. Mm-hmm. Um, and we start off with a, with a great miss. Hopefully we can plague both of them. That's good. So do you have any concerns that this game is... Uh, I know this is probably a silly question to ask someone like you who really likes Dark Souls and things like that, but <laughs> do you have any concerns that this game is too hard as uh, a, in its current state? I, I would say this is definitely a challenging game. Yeah. And if you're not if you're not ready for that, yeah. But at the same time, I am glad that they have the option, like, you know, 
you can sort of pace it at your own rate because of the opportunity. You can take easy missions. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be easy, but you can, you know, you can gradually develop your town over time, even with... I mean, you are going to face horrible losses in this game. You're good characters that you've worked up. You stick artifacts on. You give them the best equipment. And then something really bad happens. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just it. It uh, The game prevents uh, the tactic of, well, you know, what we call scum saving. Sure. So it saves after every turn. Right. So there's no way you could just be like, oh, God, I don't want to let that guy <laughs> die. No, he's dead. He's, he's dead. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. Um... I think it's there's a fine balance, right? Like with a game like this, you want it to be challenging. You want to have that sense of, of like you said, of permadeath and um, and of made of actual risk when you go down in to the dungeon. But at the same time, if a player never gets a sense of progression or of growth um, right. or of the ability to really tackle the, the challenges that the game puts in front of them, that's not fun either, right? Right. So I'd say it's challenging and fair, and and Reynolds dead. Yeah. Well. Um, I didn't like him that much anyway. Oh yeah, you will, you'll be, <laughs> level level zero characters are not a big deal when they die. You'll be grabbing new ones from the cart and throwing them into traps uh, often, I would wager. Sure. I mean, they got to learn somehow, right? Right. That's how I usually test my new characters when they're with a more experienced group is they, they go through trial by fire. They uh -huh. either come out better or dead, so. Well, there you go. You're a harsh taskmaster. Oh, no. This this is a wipe. This is like, oh god, and he gets the abuse of talent, which is so gonna he's just gonna start shouting. Oh, I love it. <laughs> he's gonna drive these other two into it right away. Oh god. I kind of want to. I just kind of. I kind of <laughs> want to see the world burn here. Well, it, it's gonna happen. Like, yeah. Like even if we beat this fight, I don't think there's any way we're getting out of the. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy, this plague doctor. He's pretty fun. He's, he's getting really, he's getting really antsy. And we got a dead oh, Vestal. Oh, there goes Vestal. And he's gonna about to be something, something bad, most likely. Oh, he's oh, selfish yeah. now. He'll actually just take the loot for himself and, okay. and try self-preservation in battle at all costs. Nice. Yeah, it seems like there's a. Pretty, pretty stressful situation going on here. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're in the bottom of a dungeon, getting killed by skeletons. It is, yeah. it's not a pleasant time. No, not for these guys, but we like it. <laughs> All right, well, we'll win the battle, grab the chest, and then. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. So would this be an appropriate time, even though we would, you know, not be getting the XP to just be like, ah, we're sure. not going to win. We, we could should go do back it. to town. But since we won't be advancing our characters in any way, I don't care. I mean, we could keep the loot. However, since this is a test chamber, we're not keeping the save file. Right. We will uh, we'll just see it. how the things turn out. Right. <laughs> I like this guy. She'd all be flanking and protecting me. On, on the plus side... We'll only need two food to eat now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can afford yeah. to uh, get rid of some of that old stuff. We can get a couple HPs. And our torch is dimming. Oh, like this we, looks we like a torches. nice little encounter here. Oh, we're, oh, Your plague doctor is not in great shape. He's he's in really bad shape. Of oblivion. And you probably haven't been able to hear the narrator over all of our blabbling, but uh, it's excellent. Like, the narration of this game is incredible. <laughs> he, he's sort of like a dungeon master yeah. almost, right? Yeah. Which I, I think is pretty fun. Ah, <laughs> oh, Plague Doctor. <laughs> well, they're both stunned. This is looking really grim. Round two. Everything's fine. I mean, I, don't, I was watching pretty closely. I'm not sure what you could have done that would have made this all go a heck of a lot better. Oh, no, I'm did. sure. I'm actually sure I could have done a much better job. Okay. Like I said, the game is hard but fair. Yeah. But there are some situations that yeah, I could have ran away. You know, there's always that. Yeah. True enough. And our, our highwayman is going to go out in a blaze of glory here. Yeah, I love it. He could still win. Yeah, he could. These these are not very potent foes. Uh, very the you can't stun them. Yeah, the road ends. <laughs> yep. He's very correct. Yep, yeah, there he's God. Feeding the evil. Oh, And defeat. as you said, we should have run away. It kept We would have kept some of the loot. Sure. In there, the metal of heart, brain, and Selfish, body. abusive. Well, they're, they're gone. They'll be in the graveyard now forever. Yeah, sure. So now you're basically... The manor, a 
crawling cave. <laughs> there is. <laughs> yeah, there really is. Um, but hey, and there's new see, heroes. We've got a, we've here. got a whole new batch, you know. And you yeah. can fight the we're not going to go out again in this chest here. But yeah, this, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. So, well, that looks pretty fun, Dan. I'm not going to lie. That is the darkest dungeon. Uh, heading to early access next week. Thank you for hanging out with us on another episode of Test Chamber.